three. Test, test, one, two, three. All right. Let's see if we're in camera here somewhere. All right. So um, this is, we're going to go over the presentation for the face Instagram research for Flor de, Le Flor de Lima. Um, so let me just get into here. No, oh, let me get into present mode. I'm just going to go through the slides. I'm going to do, uh, uh, you know, just kind of explanation of each slide. I've added some new ones that weren't here in the, the first one. Um, so Florida de Lima Farms is a, a cold press uh, juicery in the city of San Fernando. And we ran the Instagram account analysis in order to check out what the competitive landscape, what what other accounts in that uh, niche are doing, what's working for them, what's not. So that's basically what this report is all about. Um, so I hope this microphone, microphone, I hope you're working. All right, we'll test the audio right now. So, so there's four, uh, four pillars to Instagram that uh, help an account grow. Number one is the research. That's the part that we're working on right here. Uh, consistency. Uh, how many times a day you're posting according to the niche that you're in and sticking to that in order to build that trust and, uh, set, you know, kind of set up that pattern for people that, you know, they're going to be comfortable expecting a post from you already. Like they're going to be like, oh, you know, this account posts once a day and I know to expect to see a new post from them. Uh, content is uh, what the uh, posts are actually about, what's in the images, what's in the captions what the call to actions are and the network is the is very important also is the accounts that interact with you um, or the people that you partner up to do shout outs or do a promo something like that uh, you know the the other people in the neighborhood um, and that's good uh, the network is good because it also shows trust um, that other accounts are engaging with you and it helps you also um, cross promote across their audiences as well. And sometimes there's even, there's some audience crossover and uh, sometimes that crossover might be following you, might not, but um, if they're not, it's great because then they find out about you through that other, other audience. And then um, you get some new followers off that. If they're, you know, they're in the same niche, same space that you are. All right, so let's keep going. So here we're going to go through the research findings. So here, these are going to be in the report. These are the, this is August 2018. These are hashtags that um, the Flor de Lima account could rank for um, based off their current engagement levels. This is, uh, these are the hashtags that they'd be able to, to get. So that's, that's what these are. So there's a few pages of these copy and paste up. All right, so consistency. On average, the accounts that uh, we analyzed, um, we're posting them on average once a day. Yeah, well, about one time a day. Not many were doing any more than that. Uh, common patterns, account accounts used to uh, use short captions, and they ask their followers to share their opinions, like what their favorite flavors are, their favorite toppings, their favorite juice. Uh, that was a very common Thing in the big accounts, um, one of the the two main accounts we were looking at, since this is the juicing space, was uh, press juicery and also nectar um, juice, which are are big in this space. And we also looked at some similar accounts that have a similar audience, based off uh, what Instagram was telling us, the suggested accounts that Instagram suggests off the ones we were looking at. So those that'll all be in the Excel sheet that has um, all the, the handles or the names of all those accounts. Uh, we looked at about 50 accounts. So uh, the best time of the day to post is, um, let me get my mouse here, is around here. Right here we have this industry. This is just general overall Instagram. But as you post within your niche, you're going to kind of realize that sometimes there's better days and better times. Uh, but in general, uh, it's important to keep in mind that people work and at their jobs, they usually don't open up their phone 
and pretty much everybody that accesses Instagram is doing it through their their cell phone. So they're not really, you know, um, using their their personal phone on company time. So it's very normal that people check their Instagram during their lunch break. And then also in the evening um, when they're home, probably already had dinner, just sitting down to wind down. They want to they want to check out what what happened during the day in the Instagram world. And then uh, some important days to look at. Uh, we have Thursday right there. Thursday's always been popular. Um, even in the TV space, ads on Thursday always were the most popular because that's when people are planning what they're going to do on their weekend. So that's that's a good day to keep in mind if you're the type of business that gets uh, more of its traffic over the weekend. Um, so yeah, and TV car dealers are, are known for running a lot of ads on the Thursday night newscast because people are engaged and planning what to do on the weekend. Um, so if that's the type of, if lots of the customers come in over the weekend, t- definitely take a look at that. Um, and then some people might look at it before work, but that's going to be a little bit less. People are pretty busy in the morning. Uh, so the content that we saw, we're going to go over some examples. And for here we have uh Lifestyle photos with food layouts, uh, juice, juice in juice in hand, like just holding a drink. Um, there's children in every few posts. There's pet shots. There's testimonials. We're gonna see this right now. So uh, let's look at some calls to action. Okay, so we're looking at some cut. This is from actual Florida de Lima. This is a current post that they have. That's like for a, a drink recipe that's available on Sunkist. So, uh, so you know, I was like, okay, well, what if we we already know that our our demographic is uh, skewing more towards women? That's what I saw in the research, and uh, and uh, digging a little deeper, I actually realized that it's actually more like eighty five to ninety percent uh, women are the shoppers here, are the customers. So, so let's look. We could on the geo tag when we do a post, we could do. Um, we could tag a break room, just search break room somewhere, and it'll come up as a geo tag or, um, and you know, just kind of to convey this emotion. When you can't have a margarita at 10 a.m., geo tag break room. Tag a co tag a co worker who would join you, and uh, you know, just kind of promoting this drink here. So that's just one example right here. Oh uh, no, this is uh, the one on the right in the pink is from Press Juicery drinking uh, her juice that's pink wearing her her pink pants there and the caption says on wednesdays we drink pink um with the little pink car now this could also be pulled off similarly uh with florida de lima right here she has a green juice uh this green uh tablecloth back here and she has some green on her purse so an idea could be uh, get this picture, but get it with somebody that's wearing green or maybe orange, an orange juice with an orange shirt would also work and do a similar, similar um, a caption right there since it's going to identify more with the audience. Let me clear this out. Ignore. All right. So, so maybe. All right. Caption and CTA. So. This one's uh, Greens Get the Job Done. This is a current post that's already there, but I was thinking, okay, uh, some of the benefits here, boost energy, improve mood, low in sugar, mention a friend that would bring you one to work. So it kind of plays on that emotion of like, oh, my, you know, if your BFF or somebody is following you on this account, they'll probably tag you. And uh, doing the mention and tagging friends, uh, works really good on smaller accounts. Bigger accounts will ask questions and engage, and um, that's also good. But for smaller accounts, it's more efficient, it's more practical. If you're going to have a call to action, try to use the ones where people tag a friend because um, you're going to get more more bang for your, your, your CTA there. Um, so that's good. It helps you build that audience and also engage with the audience at the same time all right i hope i'm close enough to this microphone all right uh here we have colored themes um it's really common in this niche 
even in Instagram overall. Um, but, uh, but over here we are looking at the the juice niche. So this is from the the Nectar Juice Bar. We could see they're using the the blues right here. Nice blue, 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 and then it's overall blue. They're, it's they're pretty consistent with that, and it has it makes for a nice layout. It, you know, it's soothing to people like they know what to expect. And here, this is a harmless harvest. This is some of my favorite coconut water. I really like this water. Um, here we have the, they have this this pinkish theme going, and it goes. It's it's on brand with their message because they're. If you've ever had this coconut water. Um, part of the the thing is when you drink it, if you actually look at it, it's exactly this kind of color it has a pinkish color to it, and it's something they say. Well, I can't remember the reason, but it has something to do with how organic or non-contaminated it is. Um, it has that has something to do with that, but that it's, they use it, you know, kind of as a sign of their purity. So they really like to push that that pink color. So they're also using it here in their Instagram. And if you go to this account and you scroll down a little more, they'll also transition to that green bottle cap that they have, that neonish green color. They'll, they'll switch it up, but for now right here, they're using that, that pink. All right, so these were some food art accounts, you know, so, uh, just because they have similar audience crossover. I found these, these uh, images. And these images are actually are based off best performing post. Basically, uh, we analyzed the the baseline likes and comments for an account. Say if one post got a thousand likes or a thousand comments, we looked at that, and then all of a sudden, if we saw something that that went double, triple, or you know, got more than went way over the baseline, uh, that's called a best performing post. And these are two examples of. Uh, Best performing posts within the the space of its audience crossover, and because you know it is uh, Instagram, it's it's eye candy. Um, so people that are interested in juicing, health, fruit, you know, this is something. It's a nice visual visual thing to look at. So these are some things to consider. Uh, so here are the lifestyle shots for our content here. Um, so here's Starbucks, which of course is big in the, the drink space. Um, they use this whole drinking and holding your cup in your hand. Um, you know, just got on the go. Yeah, I got my, got my drink. People are proud of it. And then here, I, I really ended up liking this, um, coffee dose cafe. And again, these accounts are, are, that we analyzed are because of audience crossover inside of the, the juice space. People that follow juice type accounts are also following this uh, coffee dose here in Los Angeles. This place is in Orange County. Uh, I think they have multiples because I saw in the things that said Santa Ana and stuff like that. Um, but somewhere in Orange County. Oh, we're actually going to end up looking at this post and... But here's here's like you know here are their their lifestyle shots here on message you know they're using that pink a pinkish whitish theme with some sometimes they use these pastels you know that that's just their style. All right, um, here's color color with purpose. So here you know highlighting that that yellow here and contrasting it here with this nice. Blue, uh, blue background. These are their brand colors, and over here, you know, we're celebrating the color of the the berries, which is like this burgundy color. You know, we we have this right there, that part right there, and then Facebook, Instagram, automatically picks that bar for you just because it detects that you're doing that. Now, here are some uh, some patterns we saw. Or we saw pets. Here, are pets. There's a pet. There's another pet. But yeah, um, they're like every ten posts in these accounts, where it's pretty common to see either um, pets and small children in the images. And um, Instagram's a great place to put testimonials of uh, your customers that truly enjoy your your product. You know, 
they'll they'll actually record these themselves and tag themselves or send them to you somehow uh completely fine to go ahead and um, use those in your in your account and here's an example of a testimonial that was you know just kind of like a customer engaging with the brand on twitter they took a screenshot and then you know they they threw a background of that that pink coconut water color um, image and put the testimony on the front so something something that, that could be used take screenshots from your yelps your googles wherever you have them or people engaging with you in other places instagram facebook wherever they are and uh, you could use those in your your thing for so your um instagram feed for social proof now uh this is an interesting account this one is a juicery out in i think it's norway or somewhere in europe um they have the they use pastels really nice um i, I really like their style they they're pretty they use ne- um what are they called blank space negative space a lot in their images which is really appealing to the eye and then uh here we see the, the every few posts they the uh they'll put like some throwback american hip-hop music videos in their feed that's just their style that's what they do um and you could definitely mix up your content that way. You don't always have to stick to juice, 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 juice. You could you could have uh, different categories of like a uh, juice out on the farm, or and then some lifestyle testimonials. But you know you you don't have to always be stuck in just juice. You could mix it up to um, be yourself, be the personality of the brand that that you want to be. Um, but just make sure you know it kind of identifies with the with the market you want the uh, the buyer the consumer you want to have or already do have um and and i the account does skew more towards women so i would totally be comfortable with with speaking more to women than men because attract the people that like you already they're going to they're going to bring the men anyway um because you know they want to go get their juice, they're probably gonna bring along their boyfriend or whatever. So don't be scared to like uh, alienate people. It, this is your account is for your customer, your loyal fans. Not it's not for everybody. Not everyone's gonna follow. Um, but make it make the account for your most loyal, your diehard fans. Uh, here's a, some ways that some accounts are providing value. This one right here it's helping us um, identify a good watermelon. And then here we have this account, the, the juicing chick, that gives us some recipes for making uh, juice and detox plans. Uh, other accounts I found on, was it the Trader Joe's list? Gives a um, list of things to buy at Trader Joe's to make certain healthy foods. Um so that, that's and she'll even do some how tos and her Trader Joe's haul, but there are just ways you could provide value. No, it's stuff that's interesting to people. Uh, so this page is is a uh, is a farm to table style page. So I was kind of you know kind of thinking, oh, okay, well, Flor de Lima has its own farm, and they bring the stuff from the farm to the to the to the cafe the restaurant so this uh, this uh, I, I checked out this account and this was uh, one of their best performing posts you're just celebrating the freshness the art the of the produce that goes into making the foods we eat right. uh these are engagement posts these are these are fun uh it's really good for the for the instagram platform the algorithm to see that People are commenting, liking your post. So here, this account, uh, not necessarily in the juice. This is just kind of like a comedy account. Com- oh, yeah, I guess it would be more comedy than anything. Um, they know their audience is, is uh, the you know Mexican American market and bilingual, and they know their they know the products. The pe- they know their audience very well. They have them very well dialed in. So here they threw up this post of a typical Mexican cleaner, like uh, to mop the floor, and they ask, you know, which one's your which one's your favorite? 
and uh at least me personally number three is the one i i know the most um yeah so you know this thing it got a bunch of comments down there uh but yeah it, it lets you identify with the audience and it gets them engaging post um replying to what you put out so uh, in a way that you know just it's, it's just fun it builds a community builds a movement it's, that one's just fun all right, so here are some, uh, I'm going to go through some examples of some of the best performing posts that I found in the research of looking at the similar accounts. Uh, once again, this is looking at the, the baseline data for likes and comments. And these were the, the tip top best in, in, um, in just these recent months here. Um, so let's look at some of the captions and what they're doing. So this one's a, you know, both of these had a theme of being in the moment. This one uh, is from Press Juicery. Apparently, they're doing ice cream now. I didn't even know that. Uh, but it was like National Ice Cream Day. So they're doing like a special promo where you're getting it, I guess, for $2, the $2 freeze. And um, it got a lot, of, a lot of comments, way over their baseline likes and comments. So that's why it came up. So here it is. And in the... In the research sheet, I actually put a link of um, the best performing posts for the accounts we were researching, so you could go through all those. Um, so, if, you know, if you want to look at some more other than what are here in this presentation, uh, they're going to be in the the Google sheet. That's going to come your way. All right, so here's uh, the Starbucks. This one is Starbucks is known for doing this red cup for the holidays. But here they are, you know, celebrating the holidays with, um, you know, with the community, the, the customers, this being in the moment, you know, it just it, because it, it really is uh, bigger than just the product you sell. You, these products that we sell, they're just the vehicle to get where people want to go. Um, so it's really about celebrating the thing that's bigger than the product. It's that, that bigger aspiration that we have, um, you know, being with friends and family, enjoying a nice treat, um, sharing it with someone else. It's not just, oh, just the product and that's it, just high and dry. Um, so it's more, it's more than that. So it's important to just acknowledge that, celebrate it and be part of the community, build that community, that movement. All right, so here, here, this was one of my favorite accounts. Also had crossover um, in the juice space. Uh, this is that coffee shop I was telling you about that is in Orange County. Um, Id identify with your audience, you know, speak the way that they speak and uh, under understand them. So here's the, the caption. It says, what's the captions? A, a day without coffee is like JK. I have no idea. And uh, it, it, this is one of the, this is their best performing post. It got a lot of comments. You could go check it out and read how much people loved it. And you know, this, this just they have a kind of a quirky tone here. Um, they're it's, it's an interesting account. They're definitely focused in on women for their coffee shop. If you go check out this this account and all the all the captions that they use. They're 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 proud. They're proud of it. Um, here's another example of two best performing posts that also have crossover in the juice space. Um, it's, it's just the point of how how it really is bigger than just the um, the product that we sell. These two accounts have crossover, and they're not even I wouldn't say healthy. <laughs> it's they're both cake. Um, so I don't know how how healthy cake is but they have a follower crossover uh, we got sprinkles on the sprinkles is on the left and on the right is uh Susie's cakes and both of them you know are kind of you know um sprinkles kind of wants to figure out what flavor to bring and is asking people to to let them know which which flavor they want and then uh, Susie's Cupcakes, it's here celebrating their 13th birthday birthday of the company and business. And, you know, they're letting the, the, the customers 
you know, come celebrate with them with a special promo here. And this got a lot of engagement. So, so that's another example of a best performing post. Uh, phone call to actions. Um, you know, sometimes we want to announce that we have something, but you don't have to just say it like, oh, we have a burrito there. That's it. You could still be fun about it. Uh, let's see. This one. This one's nice. Fitness. More like fitness whole burrito in my mouth. And then burritos available Saturday and Sunday mornings. Co Costa Mesa only. So here, you know, they, they made a, they're one of their little snarky comments. Just fun. Um, and then they do let people know, hey, yeah, the burritos are going to be available on Saturday. So you could still be still be fun and have a call to action or or let people know that, you know, you have something special going or just to let them know about the menu or whatever. And now here here's the one on the right. Let's read it. Um, you know what's better than a cup of anti bitch serum? Two cups of anti bitch serum. Tag your favorite coffee date below. So this is a that call to action I was telling you about that works really good for smaller local types of accounts where you ask people to mention a friend, tag a friend. So that's exactly what they're doing. You know, they're being fun when they start and then they have their call to action of, you know, uh, tag a, tag your favorite coffee date below. And, uh, and this is also one of their, it's one of their better performing posts. Um, all right. So outside of the, we're outside of the juice base just to kind of make a point that this type of stuff works across all, all accounts and maybe you're just like, oh, I don't understand. I don't get it. Um, so, so here we have, this is from a fitness page. Uh, Elation Fitness was the account uh, I got this from. And so it's okay to stir the pot, be kind of controversial, get people going, rile them up. That's, that's what marketers do. Make noise, get attention. All right, here we have uh, Ronaldo on the, I guess, on the left and Messi on the right, uh, two of the greatest fo um, football players. And But, you know, you're, most people, you, you love one, you hate the other. So it's very controversial which one of them is better. And here, you know, and, you know, at the gym, leg day is a big deal. Well, here we have their... They're hitting both of those emotions in one post, uh, the the player and the and then also you know who works out more their legs. Um, so what are some uh, what are what are some controversial things in the space? You know, uh, organic, GMO, carbs, diets, workouts. Um, cold press juice versus centrifuge um such a you know, kind of you could use use that type of stuff when you're thinking of um of some posts you could do for this so just kind of keep that in mind and i think we're i think we're done oh no we're not done oh we have one more all right so here are some um some maybe some other accounts you could network with and, you know, get some shout outs to promos collab together. The Trader Joe's list has a good crossover. A shout out when you set something up, it's pretty typical to, to pay about $2 per thousand impressions. Um, I think that that's pretty efficient and, you know, you're going to have an audience that's actually interested in, in what you want. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to send the, the list and this presentation. It's going to be in your email and this video is going to be here. If you have any questions, go ahead, comment the video area and it has a commenting area. So you could go ahead, ask me any questions, you know, if you want to uh, check out anything else or see, see what else we could look at. Um, let me know. All right. I'm going to end this recording right now. Let's see. I'm gonna close video. Video close. Oh no, my last pass.
Mm-hmm.